Donna here from the Everything Saxophone Podcast. I'm at NAM, the NAM Show 2022, and this podcast is sponsored by Legere Reads. I'm here at the Victory and the Growling Sax booth here at NAM. Awesome display here. I got to tell you, look at all these instruments. Crazy, crazy, crazy. It's not just saxophones, folks. We got trumpets, we got French horns, flutes, clarinets, oboes. This is awesome. I'm here with Melvin Quinones. I've known him on Facebook. It's the first time we're actually really physically meeting. This is awesome. Yeah, finally, right? <laughs> yeah, after so many years. After so many years, for sure. So listen, talk to us about your company. So it's the Growling Sax and Victory Musical Instruments. Can you just give us like a background? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, Victory Musical Instruments is the main company, but the first product I designed was the Growling Sax. As, uh, as you know, I have tried to play the saxophone for more than 30 years. But I also have a background in engineering. I studied quality control engineering. I've had a strong background working with a, a lot of major companies, Microsoft, Microsoft Dell Hewlett Packard. You know, so all the knowledge of infrastructure, supply chain, plus quality control engineer really helped me, you know, design, uh, put it into the design of the instrument and see how can we make it better? How can we solve problems like the sticky G, G sharps, for example? You know, so I've worked on a lot of details that, that bring value to the players, right? That's so cool. I didn't know that. You see, the great thing about NAM, I get to meet people, you know, whether they, they, I've known them on Facebook for a long time or whatever, but I get to learn so much about people. So you designed the Growling Sax. That was a few years ago? Yes. Uh, I started the company five years ago. Wow. Now, uh, if you may remember, I had that social network, my sax talk, for about almost 10 years. I was able to get a lot of information. We have members in 100 countries. So I was able to learn what they wanted, how much they can afford, what features, what color. You know, so I had a lot of uh, big data about it, you know, and also the great relationship that we built there, right? So, you know, when I had the opportunity to finally create my brand or my first product, I took all of that information into consideration for sure. And I'm curious though, the growling sax. <laughs> what made you come up with that name? Uh, I, I love growling on the sax. You know, I, I'm not a very good... I studied classical saxophone in Puerto Rico many years ago, but I was horrible at it. I, I always had this growling sound, like, you know, and uh, I grew up playing pop or playing in churches, you know, and I like doing that. But, you know, a lot of people don't realize that technique is even used in classical. That's you know, true. exactly. So uh, they think it's just a pop thing, you know, a rock. It's actually being used in classical. So I thought, you know what? The growling sax, uh, it's a, a different name, right? Oh, for sure. It's definitely going to stand out. Some may like it or some may not, but people will remember it. No, absolutely, for sure, from a marketing point of view. And I, I think of like, you know, 50s rock and roll saxophone or King Curtis or, you know, that kind of style. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You, you know, uh, we've been thinking about uh, all the history, you know, even Gato Barbieri, you know, which played growling all the time pretty much, you know. And uh, yeah, I, I grew up listening to that. That's awesome. So can you uh, tell us you know, about your saxophones? Like what differentiates your horns from maybe somebody else? Yeah. So first of all, I, I put a lot of features into the saxophones. There are a lot of little details that, that you don't necessarily find. You know, I, I mentioned earlier the, the sticky keys, right? Yeah, yeah. It's a problem you know, with pretty much every brand out there. You know? And all it took, you know, designing a little creativity creating this uh, little mechanism here. Let's see, you, it's a little bit, it's a little spring, a little metal sheet that actually forces the key to open. So it pushes the key, you know, so if there's a little bit of saliva or sticky, it will actually force it to open. And it does the same for the low C sharp, which is also a big problem in many, pretty much every horn. Yeah. yeah. We're doing a lot of other things. For example, well, on this one, you see not only the, the great feature, but the designs, yes, you know, is, the This is beautiful. Oh, my God. E even the bell. I said the growling sack, but you may see here uh, the tiger eyes, uh, even the paws of a growling tiger. That's so, awesome. Yeah. This is really beautiful. Another nice feature about this one, for example, is the, the adjustable palm keys. Because a lot of people, you know, a lot of uh, even intermediate students that are going to college and study music, you know, they're still growing, some of them, you know, and their hands change, you know, so whatever you can raise this, you know, and adjust it to your hand. That's awesome. The thing with, the thing with saxophone is not one fits all, but if we can get them close enough, right, to what they want, right, so that's a major advantage. 
No, for sure. And I know this for me. I have I have small hands, you know, so, um, you know, there's times when sometimes these may stick out too much or whatever, you know, or for me, it's always been the issue of sometimes some uh, manufacturers have too much of a space between the bis key oh, yeah. and the B key and my finger falls in between. <laughs> So, so you know what? When I studied, uh, I studied with a professor in Puerto Rico many years ago. This was more, like 25 years ago, and I always took that in consideration. He used to do a thrill with these keys, which is so hard. Oh yeah. You know, and I thought like, I, you can't do that if that's too far apart, right? His name was Jose Encarnacion. He's a professor in New York, actually, and like I've never seen nobody do that, you know. And he just did it so easy, but I realized the positioning of the keys mattered. Sure. Yeah. Let's look at this octave key for a second. You've got something different here that I've not, not seen at least, but uh, if you could show that on the camera. Yeah. So it's a little bit of a, a groove in here. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, exactly. So it basically so, so that your finger fits a little bit better, you know, so it's more comfortable. It doesn't, the transition is not awkward, right? It's you know. a reminder that, you know, you don't have your full thumb on the left, you know, exactly. on the left thumb um, the hook over here, whatever you want to call it, it should be halfway on the hook and halfway on the octave key. Exactly, exactly. No, definitely. So these are these are part of the details that I mentioned to you earlier. You know, the fact that I studied quality engine, quality control engineering, but also listening or, or getting the feedback from the players for so many years. Right, I tried as much as possible to put this in, in consideration with the designs, but also being price conscious about the instruments because I realized we're coming after you know very tough ears. You know, not everybody can afford very expensive instruments. With all respect to all the brand that, you know, planted the seed for this to happen, but some of them are creating like very expensive instruments, one for classical, one for jazz, you know, and the reality is not many people can afford four instruments. Yeah. You know, so if I can create a, a, an instrument that will get them at least closer to what they need, and even to transition between genres, right? So, so that's important to me. I come from a Latin family that I know that most Hispanics or minorities cannot afford three horns at seven, eight thousand dollars, right? Yeah. So, so that is very important to me that I know that I'm serving them by offering a good quality and, and a fair price. If you don't mind my asking, if you don't mind my, mind my asking, so are your horns like? Is it like a student level, intermediate? Pro and you know, is this a pro model horn right here? Well, yeah. So this one is actually a limited edition that I created for myself. It was not supposed to go to market. Oh. It was not supposed to go into market. Uh, one of the owners of a large retail store that uh, he's been supporting our brand, and uh, he said, Melvin, you have to release it. And they said, you know what? We'll order 20, but we, you have to release it. This was supposed to be only for me, oh. but because uh, I wanted to have something different. So I call it the Roar Limited Edition, you know, and uh, I mentioned that, you know, players should be able to, you know, be versatile, you know, change styles or change sound without having a major investment. So on this one, in order to, to do that, I include the standard uh, brass Japanese neck, well, uh, brass neck, but I also include a sterling silver neck, you know, which a, a lot of companies really don't do that as a stock option right <laughs> you know so uh, I realized that a lot of people may be hesitant to buy a neck for fifteen hundred dollars or sixteen hundred dollars you know they should if they can uh, but pay, sometimes they will buy a horn for seven eight thousand dollars you know that doesn't include it and this really is probably the most important part of the saxophone as you may know right yes. you know your mouthpiece reed and neck is really the most important things so I decided you know what I'm gonna include this, which is major value, and it's still gonna be under the price of some of the major manufacturers. That's a, that's incredible, actually. You know what? Do me a favor. Can you talk about how a sterling silver neck, you know, what's the difference in timbre, tone quality, and stuff like that compared to lacquer? So what I found is that it may be a little bit different for every player because we don't all blow the same. We don't all have the same characteristic, right? Yeah, also the mouthpiece that they use. Now, what I found is that with this neck, the sound just projects straight through. It's a little more focused. On brass, it, it, the sound is a little more spread. That's been my experience, you know. So a lot of the people that play lead saxophone or solo, and what was surprising to me is that the classical players wanted to play with this one. I thought that they would play on the brass one, and what they compared, they said, no, this is my neck. 
No, you know what's interesting? I also play trumpet, so I play a, a silver. I play a, a silver Bach Strat, and it's the same thing. All the symphony orchestras, you know, the trumpet players are usually on the silver, the silver strats or, or silver instruments. Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. You know, uh, silver. I think uh, it's been used for many. People have the conception that, you know, for when you're playing lead or certain genres, you know, at the end of the day, it's really more about the mouthpiece than how you play. But, you know, the finishes do affect. Now, I want to point out, there's other brands that sell a silver neck, but it's silver plated. This is made out of pure 925 silver. And where, where you really want the weight of the saxophone is on the neck, on the top. Right? That's where you want more weight because that's where the sound starts and begins. That's right, so no, that's a great tip. That thank you for sharing. Yes, it. no, no. So yeah, I'm, I'm putting all my effort into making sure that we release a good product. Uh, we inspect everything. It, it goes through a very rigorous manufacturing process, but we inspect everything. You know, very, very carefully. You know, uh, whether we sell to a, a dealer or or a musician, you know, uh, quality matters to us and customer service. You know, and we want to make sure we're offering the best parts available you know, the best quality materials. And when you get a neck like this, trust me, it changes your perspective on playing. Oh my God, without a doubt. Now, where are these manufactured? So th this one is assembled in Taiwan. It's assembled in Taiwan. We do all the engineering here in the United States. It's not a typical OEM product. You know, it's not like we go and say, okay, I put my name on that one. There's actually a lot of uh, design into this one that they do for us, but it's done by three or four different assembly companies. It's not just one factory that does it all. As you know, I've had relationships in the industry for many years. You know, so I, I said, you know what, this is the best engraving guy, or this is the best assembly guy, you know, uh, the, for the painting of the instrument, you know. So we actually partner with three or four different uh, small shops, you know, to can look at this beauty. Yeah, that's, that's really, it's, it's stunning. It really is. That's incredible. And so also, see, look at, this, look at the keys, too. So yeah, there's really a lot of detail, you know, and uh, sometimes you really can't get it with uh, some of the major manufacturers, right? So, you know, this looks a little more artisanal, even though we're able to produce, you know, a fair amount of, of them, you know, but this is actually, I would say, 80% handmade. Wow. So. Wow, that's impressive. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Oh my gosh. Okay, so now let's talk about some of the other stuff here. So we have the Roar right here, right? You're part of Victory Musical Instruments, right? So that is your company, you, that is your company, and then this was your first product. So you make, it, is Victory Musical Instruments, is it is it for like students? I, I was under the assumption no, that it was no, student no, line. We, we have a very great instruments. Uh, some of them we designed in partnership with Sweetwater. So they've had a lot of input in the design of the student band and orchestra instruments, trumpet, trombone, clarinet, flute. You know, and we continue to expand with them. Uh, we work with other dealers as well, right? But obviously Sweetwater is a great company, you know. We, we yeah, respect every dealer, right? But they, they have a lot of knowledge and, uh, and we've been able to come up with uh, some improvements. And uh, I mean, students are very happy with the instruments, but even the professionals, as far as uh, some of the other instruments, uh, the professional trumpets and trombones, we have some major artists that help in the design. I'm not a trumpeter, but I, have, I think I have very good uh, advice there. Uh, one of my major uh, influencers is Gerardo Rodriguez, lead trumpeter for Mark Anthony. He just did a recording now with Ed Sheeran, uh, Camila Cabello. Uh, well, if you listen to jazz, uh, Iraquere from Cuba, you know. Uh, so we designed the trumpet together. It's called the Trumpet of Jesus. Last year in NAM, it was online, right? But uh, uh, it won like the mu uh, mu Editor's Choice Award by Music Inc. Like best instrument in the show. That's awesome. Yeah. So uh, you know, I have great people helping me with the designs of these instruments. And, and if you're not aware, Sweetmar Sweetwater uh, dot com is a great resource. It's people know it for recording, um, audio, all those types of things. Guitars. They just started a band and orchestra division within the last year. And Sweetwater has the best customer service. They're incredible. I've been using them for so long for a lot of audio needs. When I heard they were having band and orchestra, they were adding that, I was thrilled because it's such a great company. I'm so glad that you are now, they, 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 you've got your instruments on Sweetwater. That's fantastic. Congratulations. Oh, thank you so much. You know, and you know what? Are we able to improvise a little bit here? Okay, yeah, of course. 
Mike, we're gonna improvise a little bit. You might come in here a minute. <clears throat> so if you remember that website, My Sax Talk, yes. one of our great members was Mr. Mike Smith, that he was part of this network. Let me get this a little farther away, and then we can get all three of us in here. Hello, Mike. Hi, how are you? We've met before. We, we, we probably met online. <laughs> yes, for sure. Uh, yes. So when I created that website, Mike Smith was one of the members, and actually he reached out to me. He wanted to find out who created the social network for sax players, you know, and uh, I mean, he gave me major validation, knowing his background, what he's done in the industry. Well, he designed, main, he designed a lot of coins for Cowards, right? Cowards and the Silver Eagle saxophone. Silver Eagle, Silver Eagle was the last American-made saxophone. If you didn't know that. No, I didn't. Yeah, he created it for Powell, right? Yeah, for, for pa Vern Q. Powell, the flute company. Wow, that's incredible. Oh my gosh. And now now you're w now you're with Melvin over oh, here. We're good friends. He plays that thing. He has the original saxophone that belonged to uh, Cannibal. Yeah. I have one of his. And I, I'm currently with J.J. Babbitt, and I'm working with Auto Link and Meyer Mouthpieces. Wow. Okay, so then what's, aside from that connection, so you're here... Yeah, so you got the J. You got the JJ. Pieces, and Melvin helped me this week because now that I'm an old man, I didn't want to carry a saxophone on the plane, and he gave me a beautiful alto saxophone to use for the week. So can you share what you feel with our saxophone? Uh, it's uh, the ergonomics are great. The sound was fantastic. Um, just a very, very good instrument. Excellent instrument. Very free blowing, efficient with the air. It did everything I wanted to do, and it was great for me to demonstrate my mouthpieces. So, and he helped me out, and he's such a dear friend. That's awesome. See, I see. threw him under under the spot. <laughs> but hey, it's all about adapting and improvising here at Nam all the time, for sure. Yeah, improvisers. That's right. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Well, I have to get back to my booth because they're paying me. So. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> nice meeting you. And I did not pay him for that. <laughs> <laughs> that was not a paid endorsement. <laughs> well, is there anything else new coming up for you in 2022? Yes, we continue to develop uh, actually uh, on some of our saxophones. On this Upright Series, what I call the Upright Series, uh, this is our first generation of this horn. We're doing a second generation that's going to have a, a few additional features. I'm not going to announce them just yet. Sure. That is for 2023. Okay. But we're already uh, working on uh, all the designs and the changes that we're going to make. It's already a fantastic instrument, you know, but we're always going to look after more value for the customer. Right? So we're going to be adding a little bit of features here and there uh, that will add value. Um, and then on the original model called the Origin, um, that one, we're going to do a third generation of that one as well, with a few other up upgrades. And, and with all these models, I mean, it doesn't matter whether a person's playing classically or, you know, pop music or whatever. I'm loving the way these, the, the key work here. Um, it doesn't matter, right? It's just, it's going to be the person's personal preference. So the truth is, is a personal personal preference because, you know, it is affected. The sound really, the sound really starts on the mouthpiece, right? And the reed, neck, you know, now, what I find, at least this is my perception, right? Uh, some of the paints have a, maybe a thicker lacquer that, you know, will change the vibration of the horn a little bit, right? Yeah. So if you play classical, you maybe you don't want some uh, a paint that is like that, right? Maybe if you want a lot of projection, a strong sound, you know, that will help. But you maybe you want a little more vibration on the instrument, right? So they tend to pick more like uh, thinner lacquer, the gold lacquer, even gold plated. That gives a little more resonance. So, but at the end of the day, it's preference. Yes. And it's perception, because if you think about even classical, the sound in, in Europe and the US is night and day. It's very different. You know, and then there's a player that play classical, but still transition from pop, you know, or jazz, you know, so it's kind of a hybrid classical sound. So at the end of the day, if we can make good music, you know, that's where we want, we want people to have a good horn, to play good music, whether you like one style or the other. Or the other thing too, the other thing too also is that, you know, a lot of us tend to play all different styles and uh, we're called upon to play all different types of gigs. So we want our, our equipment to be versatile and some people will switch out mouthpieces, some people will switch out reeds, um, but it's great to have one horn where you could, you know, just rely on that and just do, do both of that. 
as I mentioned earlier, the most important part is the neck for me. You know, and that's what we offer, the sterling silver neck. And this actually fits most, even the vintage horns. It fits most of them, of the vintage horns. Yeah, so people have tried it even with the Mark Sixes and everything. You know, it really changes your horn. You know, if you're even if you're playing a, a session and you gotta record first tenor, second tenor, first alto, instead of switching mouthpiece, which is harder, you change the neck. It changes your horn. And if that you you just said like the magic thing too, if that fits most like vintage horns and stuff and Mark Sixes, that's gonna be the important thing because you know we don't want this like swirling around. Exactly. So some of the people, you know, I do recommend that they take it to their technician so they would adjust it to make it fit their horn a little better. N normally, this will be a little bit longer than the standard, and it's done up, it's done uh, intentionally because the tenon adapter sometimes can be a little longer or shorter than different horns. So your technician may be able to shave it down a little bit, you know, to make it fit your horn. A lot of details that players don't necessarily know, you know, why is this so long, you know, but it's done on purpose as well, so. Well, again, you, you have that engineering background, yeah. and that's that's the key. You know, that, that to me is gold right there. Absolutely, but you know what, the number one thing, even more than that, is caring. And I care about making a good quality, and I care about my customers, so. I, I, we can tell, absolutely, yeah. we can definitely tell. Well, listen, Melvin, first of all, his booth has been nonstop busy yeah. for all three days. So this was the only time I got a chance to catch him, but now it's getting crazy over here again. So I wanted to thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much, Donna. I appreciate you. I admire your job. Thank you so much for your time and for being here. Thank you.